What up, Oznuts? Once again, this is er Erica with another commentary. This time, it's His Majesty, the Scarecrow of Oz. And without further ado, let's begin. This fil film is also brought to you by the, the Oz Film Company. It, it was actually completed in September 1914. It premiered in Los Angeles in October 5th, 1914. Interestingly enough, this was written by Baum, but that's not the interesting part. It was written before the book, and he act in part he wrote this to work out the bugs in the book that came what well, was published a year later. Though as you watch this, you're gonna find that it doesn't really follow much of the book at all. King Cruel commands Princess Gloria, his niece to wed Googly Goo, a courtier, but the girl refuses. The first third is a lot like the Scarecrow of Oz, but that's about where the similarities end. You'll see, it gets pretty weird by, through, by the middle. So here we have King Cruel, Princess Gloria, Googly Goo. Unlike the book, Googly Goo doesn't play a big a part as he does in the book. And if you're expecting to see Cat and Bill and Trotum, sorry to disappoint you all, but they're not going to make an appearance. However, you are going to see a number of, of actors and actresses from, from Patchwork Girl in this one that you will recognize. Keep an eye out for them. Here we have a cutaway. This this here we actually see the scarecrow being built, built in the field. We're gonna see a lot of deviations from the book, and here it's gonna imply that the scarecrow has not been made until this very point, as well as well as a lot of other other things that aren't consistent with the bomb series. There's a probably, so it kind of makes this film kind of its own isolated unit, its own story. Though for the Oz, though for those familiar with Oz, it's going to be a fun little romp. If not a little trippy. Princess Gloria scorning Googly Goo falls in love with Pawn, the gardener's boy. Though, in to today's standards, this is what we call settling. Oh yeah, she's clearly doing this too to make her uncle ticked off. What, what girl hasn't done this to tick, tick off a parental unit? I mean, she obviously doesn't like Googly Goo, but a gardener's boy? I mean, there's no chemistry there. The lovers are surprised by King Cruel. Remember, what hap whatever happens, I will always love you. Or, you know, until something better, better comes along. You know, like a guy with a nice car, or, you know, has a job at his dad's company. Yeah. 
he's not happy. You know, if you don't want to get caught, maybe not meet, like, in the backyard. But there's an idea. I mean... Meanwhile, in the cornfield... The use of corn made in Spirits of the Corn. Dorothy, a little Kansas girl, is ruthlessly captured and enslaved by the Wicked Witch. This is another example of how this movie is kind of its own story. Here we have Dorothy, and it's implied that she's never been to Oz up until this point. She's confused. She looks lost, kind of bewildered, scared. And she... And it, there's no hint or implication of how she got to Oz in the first place. All that we know is that she's in trouble. And for some reason, Mombi in, in this story looks like the Witch of the West. And and also she plays the part of Blinky that, that we recognize from the book. Though since Baum was in the process of writing the book here, he, he probably made that change after. But that's just speculation. Here the corn spirits are performing a dance in a very, well, nowadays considered offensive, but a but use the symbol of a Native American to bring him to life. This is the closest Baum has ever gotten to actually get offering a, any form of explanation of how why the Scarecrow was alive, or at least how he was brought to life. No actual motivation, other than the fact that some supernatural beings felt like it. And you'll notice this is, and this is actually the same actor who played, that was the same actor who play, played Ojo's uncle, Unc Nucky, in the last movie, Patchwork Girl of Oz. And now Gloria is in trouble. Now, as we can see, this is taken from Wonderful Wizard, where where Dorothy's made a slave to the Wicked Witch. King Cruel visits Mombi to the witch to ask her to destroy Gloria's love for Pawn. Here, Mo Mombi is kind of a composite of multiple characters. The Wicked Witch of the West, Mombi, and, of course, Blinky, in this case, in this exact scenario. Ever ready to do mischief and make a dishonest dollar, Mombi awaits her royal visitors in high glee. That, that simple. Now here Dorothy witnesses the act in where Trot would have witnessed it in the book. Mm. 
or in this case she was thrown out and she meets Pawn. Trot in the book, Pop, Trot was hiding, I believe. I feel like this is a metaphor for something, making a girl. I'm, I'm kidding, of course, sorry. It's Nowadays you'd call the cops. Highly unethical stuff here. Will you give up this baseborn lover? Never! Yeah, not if it ticks you off. Pfft, teenagers, am I right? Dude, you get arrested for this nowadays. Can you kill her love for the gardener's boy? Yes, your majesty, I can freeze her heart. Do it, do it then. Yeah, that's... So you all recognize that. that those of you who've read Scarecrow of Oz this bomb like this enough to keep it in the book which I don't mind either it was, it's a pretty cool part and the effect that they're going to show is actually pretty cool too he looks like the Burger King King now that I look at him Have it your way. The incantation. Mombi summons her band of witches. Kind of looks like she used the flu, flu system. Any Harry Potter fans out there? All those witches around the cauldron makes me th think of when my relatives come over for Thanksgiving. We're all in the kitchen at the same time. Looks eerily similar to this. And just like the book, they're transformed into young wo women. spell is performed. Glory's heart is frozen to all mortal loves. And there's her heart. frozen. Anybody tempted to lick it? I kind of want to lick it to see if my tongue sticks. Is that weird?
Now that the spell is over, they are turned back to their original forms. Like watching the Kardashians put on their makeup. Take it off again. Yeah, busted. And Frank Woodward returns as numerous animals, in this case, though, a donkey. Yeah, usually you have to go, go to Tijuana to see something like this. It's like a snuff film. And he's still hanging out in the cornfield. Unnecessary shot. Side effects of frozen heart may include incessant boredom. It, which we see here. Stay six feet away. Wear a mask. Use hand sanitizer. I think you've just been dumped. That's kind of weird going up to someone and doing that to someone you've just met. Frozen heart or not. It's. Some really weird touches in this movie. A lot of bad touches. Though she probably doesn't care. She looks pretty bored. And. And. Kind of dazed. Maybe a little drunk. And here's where the title character actually gets involved with the story. When we're 20 minutes in.
Now, a year, if you actually go online and find, find this movie, you may actually find a second title for it, The New Wizard of Oz, and that's because it, it was actually, there was a distribution deal after it was, after it came out by the Alliance Film Corporation, and, and it was circulated in theaters it, as late as 1920, though it was never really popular or financially successful in any way. The Scarecrow falls in love with Gloria and confesses his love. Yeah, this this gets old pretty quick. Not as bad as it could have been. It's like, dude, you, you've been alive for like ten minutes. I, at least go other places in the cornfield first. That was kind of harsh. Like, did, what did he do to you? Like, that's really, like, not cool. She, like, she does everything short of curb stomping him. For, like, no reason. That's just un... Now she's, like, gutting him. That's, like... That's, like, unnecessary. Like, yeah, you're wicked, but you don't have to be a jerk about it. Just saying. What's up with that? Jeez, no wonder this only got a 53% score on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, it was just on audience scores and no critics, but still. Got higher than. Got higher than. Um, let's see, Patchwork Girl of Oz though. Got like eleven points. Strangely enough. And if you look at his neck, you can see you can see where he has to look through. It's a pretty fun costume, actually. Appar apparently, th there are wires inside inside the legs that are used to control the e ears and mouth. It's very intricate inside. I find it quite interesting myself, especially. I didn't think it anything until the century with furry masks were that advanced. Do give it up. It, it's it didn't work last time. And here you're gonna recognize this character from Scarecrow of Oz. My name is Button Bright. I'm lost. I don't know where I came from, and I don't care. Now, unlike unlike the book, where he used the magic umbrella to land in Mo, and from there goes to Oz with Trot and Captain Bill, here he just kind of pops out of nowhere, and is just in Oz. Oz. The American characters in this movie are just have the same story they're just there didn't really explore that very much I wonder if there was some the stuff Sarecrow is unable to eat food I wonder if there was some kind of direction for that some kind of purpose for that 
It's unable to eat food, but I don't think it was for lack of trying, it looks like. Yeah, imagine traveling with him. You have to keep him on a leash. Like a little, you know, like those little kid leashes three-year-olds have, that some people put their three-year-olds on. One of those. It's weird how the scarecrow is just walking around in the water. It just kind of bugs me because he's supposed to be stuffed with straw. So wouldn't he get kind of soggy and flop around? I mean, yeah, it's a guy in a costume here, but you think he would, you know, act. And here he's just kind of, you know, mess messing around. Like a little kid, yeah, it's funny, but it's just, it bugs me. Pond Buddy, the Tin cast Castle of the Tin Woodman. Now, when they find him, he's stuck, but he already has his castle. And they're meeting him for the first time, which is also bizarre because for him to have his castle in the first place, at least in the, sto in the original canon, he would have had to meet the other characters first. This is, but I guess again, I guess it has to do with this being its own story, storyline, almost almost like an alternate storyline. This is actually, and the Tin Woodman here is actually played by Pierre Couder, Derek, you, who you recognize, you recognize that name from the Patchwork Girl of Oz. Though unlike in though unlike in that in that movie, you won't see him doing any of his acrobatics in this one. A little bit of a disappointment. I think he would have done better as the scarecrow in in this one, so he could show off more of his acrobatic skills. He was since he was so impressive as the patchwork girl. Now that bewilders me. That seems very unlike his character to just, even a Wicked Witch character, to just chop off her head like that. Because the Tin Woodman would, wouldn't just decapitate someone just like that, even though, I mean, yeah, she's fine, as you see. There's a lot in this movie that do doesn't quite follow Bomb's own canon. What little, though, granted, Bomb isn't known for continuity, even in his own store, even in his own books. You think he would try to keep keep at least some of the rules in his in his movies?
Oh, poor Pawn. Now he's a kangaroo. She probably should have chosen something that... She probably should have chosen something that can't outbox a boxer. That's true, look it up. The Cowardly Lion is the king of the jungle. It's this thing again. You'll recognize the lonesome youp. The lonesome, I believe it's called, the, the lonesome youp from the from Patchwork Girl of Oz. And as you can see, the lion's not crazy about it either. Also. Lion is also played by Woodward as well. The Tin Woodman's heart is captured by the princess. Yeah. Now that's not fair. This girl's not even trying and I can't get a date. I mean, that's just wrong. I'm so wrong about that. Don't like this. Eh. That I like. You know, he barely touched him. The Tin Woodman, indignant at the poor girl's plight, proposes to conquer King Cruel and make Gloria queen. So now we have a new goal in mind, but watch as they try to approach this new goal. Keep in mind this is an hour-long movie and we're only halfway through. And Gloria is unenthused. I don't get you crazy kids. This scene is taken from the wonderful Wizard of Oz, where where they're on the on the raft traveling across the river. The only except the only difference here instead of a cow the cowardly lion they have button bright between this so in case you haven't noticed this Mombi Tin Woodman having the castle their bo bomb is borrowing from some of his other books in this movie see in the scarecrow stuck stuck on the pole in the river. I don't understand why he's sinking. You'd think he'd float. Though they wanted to do some special effects here. Ow. I know he's a scarecrow, but that looked like it hurt. I'm sure they had this just so he can they have him meet the mermaid and why the umbrella? Nothing makes sense in this movie. Nothing makes sense anymore.
instead of being rescued by a stork, he's rescued rescued by a crow. Also played by Woodward. They got off the raft, but I guess they're looking for him. Oh. There we go. That's actually quite adorable. Kind of reminds me of the penguin dance thing from from Mary Poppins. But kind of cuter because it's a crow and a scarecrow. There's some strange irony about it. Like, why are you shooting him away? Don't be a jerk. I don't know. And then they get harassed by a cow, and it was by this point, the first time I was watching this, I started asking myself, what was this movie about again? You kind of start to forget. He was trying to catch the cow so it wouldn't hurt them anymore, but now he got caught. Unfortunately, we we fail to see much of the Scarecrow's intelligence in, in this movie. Just mostly just a bunch of slapstick. He, he's used mostly as a clown figure. I mean, makes sense since especially in in his with his face makeup you can see he's very much looks like a clown but it's a little disappointing to since you know the scarecrow is known for his brains that he's he doesn't get to show off his intelligence as much Now to continue on their journey. The Wall of Water. And it's not so much a wall as it is a speed bump of water. A wall, not so much a wall, maybe a hmm. 
not a wall like like would you imagine like a like as tall as a brick wall maybe more like one of those little garden walls it's It's not a very it's not a very impressive use of effects here. Not sure why they decided to include this. A lot a lot of what these movies rely on on is the use of effects, but here this one's just not very impressive. Just tilting the camera. Maybe it was maybe it was back then, but it if if that's the case, it's not not a effect that's been, that's aged well. Perhaps if they had gone a different direction, like maybe using the topsy turvy river, that would have done for a bit better plot device or better scene I should say that would have been more entertaining to see That doesn't look like that. That looks like it wasn't intentional, but it, which is probably why the the Tin Woodman just stood up and went went on. Otherwise, they probably would have put in something about him rusting. Or it just could be an, another inconsistency. Travelers meet the Wizard of Oz, who offers to save them from Old Mombi. And take a look what's pull pulling the front, the front of his cart, the sawhorse. I think that's a cute little detail right there. But yeah, here's something else that makes it a totally different storyline. The Wizard isn't in control of Oz here. He's he lives in Oz. And he's a wizard, but but he's not in control. Even though Dorothy has ne never been there and all the character all the the Fab Four characters, so to speak, have never met before. And I'm not quite sure what the D and I'm also just confused overall. This is more just technicalities and such such, but I'm kinda confused at the nature of this cart. It's just a it's just a box on wheels. I don't know, you think the wizard would be on an actual carriage, you know, or you know, or a caravan or something. Or, you know, at least poke holes on the front so you can see where you're going. I know the sawhorse is pulling it himself, but still. Here he uses some a good combo of old tricks and and magic. Here he's used. He uses the trap door to get them to escape to keep Mombi out, and soon you're going to see see him use real magic, proving that he is in fact a real wizard in this case and not just a humbug.
And here's where the lion comes back in finally. When I first saw this, I thought I thought they were just showing the lion randomly, but here there was an actual purpose. Him being shown earlier. Yeah, that that's this is happening. Hmm. You think he would actually notice the line? Or at least point out the lion when he brings the tin woodman over. He's like a big cat here. He just wants attention. And from what it look, looks like, they recruited him in helping with their cause. Now, Mombi's not enough, but the wizard has plans for her, and you're going to see where the actual magic comes in. We have a can, and with a wave, Leviosa. Too soon. Preserved sandwiches. Quite frankly, this part gives me kind of some anxiety because I do not like small spaces, and it bothers me because I can't, would not because for some reason seeing her cramped in that small space and probably thinking about the limited amount of air kind of freaks me out low key freaks me out anybody else re anybody else feel that way however this part is hilarious gotta say preserved witch that's pretty funny gotta gotta give that kind of kind of makes me forget that mommy is in there possibly suffocating oh god So we've seen Fred Woodward as a donkey. Oh, King Cruel overtakes the wandering princess and carries her back to his castle. We've seen Fred Woodward as as a donkey, a crow, a sawhorse, a cow, a kangaroo. We've seen him pre play pretty much all of the principal animals in this mo in this movie. Uh, go ahead and write a comment of which one is your favorite. I'm liking that kangaroo myself. Hmm. 
Yeah, and he's gross. I don't mind him kicking him. He's Googly Goo's gross. Even with his small part versus the book. That guy, that King Cruel is. I'm trying to come up with a Burger King pun, something about a Whopper. Dang it. <laughs> Ramparts of the King's Castle. Now here comes the climax. We're at, we're at the castle and our small well, I wouldn't call it an army but we got limited people working here they get they're trying their best they're trying their best, you know what, they're trying their best about trying to fight the king's army on the ramparts ramparts and Gloria overcomes her indifference just enough to throw down a rope. Rope ladder. As soon as they notice. There we go. Just like in the book, he's full of arrows. As if you recall, call the... King Cruel in the book had his soldiers stick him with arrows too, but they were not, you know, useful because, well, you can guess why. He's doing his best. Here come, comes the Tin Woodman, Axe of Blazing. Dorothy takes King Cruel's crown. And in a panic, she tosses it on the scarecrow's head, thus making him king. Because apparently that's how that works here in Oz. But I guess that the soldiers are cool with it, so I guess that's what we're going with. And the scarecrow looks pretty okay with it too. I mean, he's literally he's literally less than a day old, so I guess he's, he's cool with anything. And the poor lion can't climb the ladder. Poor guy. I feel sorry for him. To keep his the tie and dry. They better let him in. His Majesty the Scarecrow, Conqueror of the Mighty King Cruel. Bit of an overstatement. I mean, wouldn't that honor go more to Dorothy? She actually took the... I mean, the Scarecrow was just kind of there. Pawn's back, and he's still trying his darndest. Still not working, buddy. And here comes His Majesty the Scarecrow. Yeah, they see just just like the title. Yeah. 
And here's the wizard. Here he has the preserved sandwich. And he's gonna put some finishing touches on here. He's gonna help wrap up the storyline. You can guess what's gonna happen. He's, if I let you out, will you melt the heart of Princess Gloria? And I don't blame her for agreeing. Yeah, she's... I, I would agree, too. I would, like, probably let go of everything I hold dear to be let out of that can. Lumos Maxima! Yeah, she actually looks pretty grateful. Again, I don't, I don't blame her. So she brings back her witches. What up, witches? Her heartsicle melted into a normal heart. And she feels better. She can feel a range of emotion more than just bo boredom and indifference. And Pawn is now back to normal. Pawnaroo no more. And she is and she requests that Googly Goo be taken away. declare that they will be married. All hail the king. And there's Ozma once again, thus declaring the end. So overall, pretty weird movie. Gets really weird in the middle, a little nonsensical, at least in my opinion. But if you're a fan, fan of Oz, you'll probably find it more entertaining than anything because there's just so many Oz references in here for, for many different books. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this commentary. It, if you want to hear more, more about OzCon, or whether updates or just more videos from this channel, please, please like and subscribe. And, and I will see you next time.